Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at, at another torque problem and the goal of this problem is fairly simple. We have a parked car with the following parameters. It has a distance d between its wheels and its center of mass is located a height h above the ground. The goal of the problem is to find the normal force exerted on the car's wheels if it's resting on a slope of angle theta. Here's a really quick edit before I jump into the solution of this problem. I want to be clear that this center of mass here is halfway between the two tires, right? So this distance is d over 2 this distance is d over 2. Anyways, that's it. Uh, the problem wouldn't be solvable if you didn't know these distances. So, to tackle this, we're going to be using the concept of static equilibrium. Since the car isn't moving, we know two key facts that sigma f equals zero, and that uh, the sum of the torques is also zero. All right, so like most problems, uh, the best way to tackle this is to make a free body diagram of what's happening on the car. So we're gonna start with that. our coordinate system. I'm just going to do a random xy coordinates through the center of mass. You could argue that the problem would be easier if you made the coordinates uh, parallel and perpendicular to the slope, but I find it doesn't really change a lot if you do it like this. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and label some forces, and we'll do purple for this. So, on the center of mass, we know that we're going to have mg pointing straight down. Now, on wheel 1, up from the ground, we're going to have some normal force acting on it. And I'm going to label this force N1. On wheel 2, we're going to have a different normal force. I'm going to label this force N2. Now, there has to be friction in order to keep this car from falling because as we can see, these N1s have, uh, or MG has a component that goes down the direction of the slope, right? So therefore we're going to need friction as well. So just like with the N1 and N2, I'm going to label my frictions F1 and F2. Let's go ahead and break MG down into two components, one that's perpendicular to the slope and one that's parallel to the slope. Let's go ahead and figure out how we can write uh, these forces, and I'll go ahead and call these weight, uh, we'll call this weight A, and we'll call this one weight B. Okay, so let's figure out what weight A and weight B are. So, just clearly in this picture, we can see that this angle is 90 minus theta, right? And then vertical angles, so this is 90 minus theta here. So that means if this is a right triangle, then this top angle is just theta, okay? So I'll delete all the angle right out so this is a little less sloppy. This here is theta. Okay. So Therefore, I'm going to write out the following. 
sine theta equals WB over MG. So WB equals MG sine theta. Of course, then WA is just MG cosine theta. Right? And so what we know is since the car is moving or isn't moving at all, we can say that the forces acting in this perpendicular direction sum up to zero and that the forces acting in this parallel direction equal to are equal to zero. Okay, let's make this super clear and say that things that act down the slope this is going to be positive and things that act in this up perpendicular direction are also positive. So that means when we write out our equations we're going to get the following. N1 plus N2 minus WA, right, which is just mg cosine theta. this equals zero. Now just do the same thing for our uh, parallel direction. So WB, which is mg sine theta, minus F1 minus F2, this also equals zero. All right, so here are, are our first two equations, and these are derived from sigma f equals ma, which equals zero. Okay, now let's do the same thing, but with the torques. I'm going to go ahead and copy this picture again and move it down. So first, let's make a clear recognition that MG is not a torque in this system because it's acting directly on the car's center of mass, right? Therefore, it has no rotation components. Likewise, since these normal forces and frictional forces are not acting on the center of mass, they are torques and they add rotation to the system. I'm going to categorize these forces in either clockwise acting forces or counterclockwise acting forces, aka would they push, the, uh, would they rotate the car in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do this in like this light green, right? So this N1, for instance, we can see that it would rotate the car in the clockwise direction. N2, however, would act in the counterclockwise direction. F1 would act in the clockwise direction. F2 would also act in the clockwise direction. We know that the torque due to N1 plus the torque due to F1 plus the torque due to F2 minus the torque done by N2, this all equals zero. All right. Now, the nice thing is, is that we're given uh, distances in order to 
help us figure out what these torques are. So our new goal is to substitute values for each of these torques, right? Let's keep in mind that torque fundamentally is R cross F. AKA, what we need to look for is the perpendicular distance between each of these forces and then just multiply them by the forces themselves. So right, for instance, we could write out this vector R to N1, right? But this component of R that's parallel to N1 doesn't contribute any torque because they're parallel. This perpendicular component, uh, D over 2, this would be D over 2, this does contribute. So for instance, with this in mind, the torque from N1 would be D over 2 times N1. It's the same thing with this friction. What's the component distance that's perpendicular to the force of friction F1? Well, it's H. So F1 becomes H F1. Same thing with F2. And it's the same deal with N2. So this is derived from sigma t equals zero. All right, I'm gonna move our force equations down and there we go. We have a system of equations. So the first thing we're going to do to solve this system of equations is we're gonna move F1 and F2 you know what? I'll label these equations 1, 2, and 3. So in equation 3, we're going to move F1 and F2 to the other side and say that F1 plus F2 equals mg sine theta. In equation 2, I'm going to move mg cosine theta to the other side and we get n1 plus n2 equals mg cosine theta. In equation 1, I'm going to substitute in the fact that f1 plus f2 equals mg sine theta. So we get d over 2 n1 plus h times mg sine theta minus d over 2 times n2 all equals zero. From here, I'm going to isolate my n1 and n2 in this equation. So what that means is that d over 2 n1 minus d over 2 n2 equals negative hmg sine theta write this again as n1 minus n2 times d over 2 equals negative hmg sine theta or n1 minus n2 equals negative 2 hmg sine theta over d. All right. We can see that with this equation right here, we can uh, use some elimination. So I'm going to move that down. N1 plus N2 equals mg cosine theta. I'm gonna add these equations together to solve for N1. So we're gonna get two N1 equals mg cosine theta 
minus 2 hmg sine theta over d. And then I'm just going to divide this all by 2. And we get that n1 equals 1 half mg cosine theta minus hmg sine theta over d. All right, we've solved for one of the two forces. Now all I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute uh, this n1 back in to n1 up here, and then we'll solve for n2. So, 1 half mg cosine theta minus hmg sine theta over d plus n2 equals mg cosine theta. What we can see here is that all this does, this is going to subtract from this right side. So this is just going to end up becoming 1 half mg cosine theta. I'm going to move uh, this term to the right. And 2 equals 1 half mg cosine theta plus h mg sine theta over d. And there we go. We've got our answers. There's n1. And there's n2. So what we can see from this is that n2 is larger in magnitude than n1, which should naturally make sense when we looked at the torques over here, because n1 was acting in the same direction as the forces of friction, whereas n2 was acting in the opposite direction, so it had to overcome n1 and the frictional forces that were helping to rotate the car, which is why it had to be bigger. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this little problem, and thanks for watching.